this video, we are going to show how cardiac auscultation is performed in the clinical practice, locating the valve auscultation foci and recognizing each of the physiological heart sounds. For this, in the clinical practice, a stethoscope is used. We will use an electronic stethoscope coupled to a tablet via Wi-Fi which through an application will be able to record heart sounds and the graphic representation. The use of headphones is recommended for better hearing of heart sounds. First of all, we briefly explain what the four heart sounds correspond to. The first heard sound results from the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve due to the vibration produced by these tight valves immediately after closure together with the vibration of the adjacent walls of the heart and the major vessels that surround the heart. This noise is due to the fact that the blood is violently propelled against the atrioventricular valves, which is closed baking up against the walls of the ventricle and again repeating this process. The propagation of the vibration of the blood and the ventricular walls constitute the physical basis of the first noise. The mitral valve closes almost at the same time that the tricuspid valve, that the two components not being perceived separately. But in certain situations, a physiological doubling of the first sound can be heard, especially during deep inspiration due to a delay in the closure of the tricuspid valve in relation to the closure of the mitral valve. The second noise is the result of the vibration of the aortic and pulmonary valves during the closure at the beginning of ventricular diastole. It is a higher noise than the first. Therefore, ventricular systole occurs between the first and the second tones and ventricular diastole occurs between the second tone and the first tone of the subsequent cycle. Since the duration of the systole is approximately half of the diastole, it is easy to differentiate between the two tones according to this detail. The doubling of this tone can occur on expiration as it increases venous return due to a decrease in the intrathoracic pressure which generates a delay in the closure of the pulmonary valve since the time required by the right ventricle to expel the increase of blood volume received during expiration is greater. The third noise is a diastolic noise that occurs after the second tone and has a very low frequency. It is caused by sudden feeling of the ventricle. Generally, this third noise is not audible physiologically, although it can be heard in children in whom it does not usually indicate a pathology. Finally, the fourth sound is a presystolic noise that is heard before the first sound, and it's due to the vibration produced by the atrial contraction against a poorly compliant ventricle. This noise is very low pitch and is usually audible only in pathological processes. The place where it's best heard is at the apex. There are five foci of cardiac auscultation. These foci do not correspond to areas of exact anatomical projection of the heart valves, 
but rather they are places where her sounds are better perceived. Therefore, in each of the auscultation foci, not only will the noise caused by a single verb heard, but the valve noise that is heard most intensely is caused by the valve in whose focus we auscultate. Before proceeding with cardiac auscultation, let us remember that the patient has to lie on the stretcher on his back, with the head slightly incorporated about 30 degrees. Donate shirt much pressure when using the auscultatory piece, in order not to stretch the skin as it could absorb a certain amount of sound. We are going to proceed to auscultate each of the cardiac foci. We will start with the mitral focus. Mitral focus, located at the intersection of the left midclavicular line with the left fifth intercostal space. A patient beat zone or tip impeachment. Tricuspid focus, located in the cephoid appendix or in the sixth right chondrocostal joint. Aortic focus. It's located at the intersection of the second right intercostal space and the parasternal line on the same side. Pulmonary focus, located at the intersection of the second left intercostal space and the parasternal line on the same side. Accessory or secondary aortic focus at the herb zone. It's located at the intersection of the left third intercostal space and the parasternal line on the same side.
Next, to favor the unfolding of the first and second tones, we are going to take a deep inspiration, followed by a deep expiration. We auscultate the mitral and pulmonary foci. Please breathe in and out deeply. In this case, the two peaks of the recording correspond to the two components aortic and pulmonary of the second heart sound. the two peaks of the record corresponding to the first hair sound so the two components mitral and tricuspid of the noise. As we can observe, the doubling of the second tone is audible, but not the first tone, since it's much more difficult to occur in physiological processes. Next, we are going to perform a series of maneuvers. Please lie in the left lateral decubitus with the left arm stretched out. In this position, we will auscultate the mitral focus, which favors the auscultation of the third tone and fourth tone if given. The third tone is physiological, while the fourth tone is pathological. In the same position, we are going to auscultate the third tone in pulmonary focus. We are going to perform a second maneuver. Please sit with your chest slightly bent forward. Take a series of deep inspiration and expiration, stopping breathing in the expiratory phase, known as the Valsalva maneuver. The mitral focus is auscultated. This position favors the auscultation of aortic murmurs.
As the patient is young and healthy, no aortic murmurs are observed on auscultation. Mm-hmm.